Om Shanti, welcome everyone. Good evening. Today is our Tuesday evening class, and uh, it is very unique in the sense uh, it is going to be a, a different experience for you all. Until now, we have you probably have attended many sessions where there are lectures. But this is different because uh, it is more like a workshop. And it's a two-step uh, workshop. Today is uh, step number one, and next week it's going to be number two. And uh, our speaker is Sister Deborah. She's from all the way from Hawaii Islands. She's joining us, and she's going to... Uh, take us into new understanding of the meditation. Uh, we, you probably know uh, how to meditate sitting in a quiet corner, closed eyes, but uh, real use of the meditation comes when we are uh, in li real life experience. So as a, as a part of that, we will learn from Sister Deborah how to uh meditate while doing while in action and so that that will be the highlight of today's workshop and so i'm very excited to learn this really important uh, topic uh, i want to tell a little bit about sister she is a physical therapist by profession uh, she's an integrative healer uh, in multiple modalities. And she's a student and a teacher of Raj Yoga for several years. And like I was mentioning, she's uh, currently providing her service from Hawaii, uh, the island of Kauai, of the Hawaii island. So the today is the step number one uh, of our workshop. And 
Um, let me see. Yeah, and the next one will be March the 7th. So let us all welcome Sister Deborah. Om Shanti Vinod. Thank you for that sweet music. How healing. And Mahalo Anubuti family for the practical support offered by this Tuesday series. Let's begin with meditation. It's such a wonderful way to become settled. And I want you to notice, take a breath in as though you're filling your whole head with extra oxygen and then let it out. And now breathe into your neck, enriched, and release it. We know there's more where that came from. Let's breathe into one arm, all the way down to your fingertips, and then let it go. And take a breath for free. Now breathe into the other arm with intention. And let that breath go. And notice the breath moving your chest as you inhale. And exhale. Now notice your belly. Inhale. And exhale. And breathe into your right leg. Imagine it's going all the way down to your foot. Then exhale it again. And now into your left leg. And allow your eyes to go into soft focus. While I'm aware of my space, I'm no longer looking at things. I feel the peaceful pattern of my breath. And I turn my attention inwards with the sparkling point of light that I am behind my eyes. I am a living soul. My natural nature is peace. I feel myself welling up with unlimited love for this body, for all nature, unlimited love for each and every soul. I am an ever-living soul subtle being of divine light. I find myself marveling at how powerful I, the soul, am. I activate this body. And through this body, I can play my action part walking in the world. I am a soul. I am not this body. And I, the soul, am eternal. I am peaceful. I am peace. Mm. 
and taking another deep breath. Allow yourself to notice so much is my belly moving when I breathe in, when I breathe out. How far down does the air seem to go? You might be aware it changes throughout the day, depending on what we're doing, what we're thinking, what we're feeling. It's a wonder to be alive to know who we truly are, the invisible spark of life within us. I want you to contemplate this for a few more minutes. Notice what you feel and how your breathing is influenced by it as you hear this song. You are beautiful, true and divine You are beautiful, true and divine When I look in your eyes, I see you shine You are beautiful, true and divine Beautiful, 
true and divine. You are beautiful, true and divine. You are beautiful, true. wonder aloha spotify oh. take a break and visit hawaii at mm -hmm. least music click now to listen to the best of hawaiians i wonder as you are with this breathing experience this meditation this song who would be willing to share what you're noticing in your physical body right now or in your feelings or your thoughts So we have them unmute, if you know, or do you, okay, you can unmute yourself. If you need help, raise your hand and we can help you. I feel better. How lovely. Now, how did you notice that? In what way? Well, I actually have a lot of physical pain right now. And um, I've been practicing Raj Yoga for a long time, but it hasn't been very stable lately because I'm quite ill. But I just could feel how I was tuning in to um, just feeling more eternal instead of what's happening in this moment and feeling more free from this particular scene of life and feeling lighter. Truth is in the experience. Thank you for sharing. Yes, Rick, what would you notice? Well, first of all, start off that I, I started having the flu about last week. And I had this congestion. So when I was tuning into the, the the words as well as the music meditation and such, my my there was like almost like a clearing for me in my congested area. So it's interesting because I was hacking for a little while and then it calmed down, and then it comes up um resurfacing. But it was nice. It was there was this soothing liquid of peace and strength. And and there was one point when the music stopped, I said, wait. Oh my God. <laughs> Exactly. So that was my experience. Thank you for sharing, Rick. I'm so glad that you feel inner changes, even your secretions respond to peace. Yes, yeah. it was amazing. Absolutely. Is there anyone else who is trying to get themselves unmuted? Um, I, it's I joined a little late, so I don't, I don't have experience for today's meditation. But mm -hmm. last session when you did, and you did the exercise for the Wu, and it kind of helped me calm if I'm, like, tired or anxious or anything. So I do that uh, exercise, and it helped me calm down. So um, that was my experience from last session. You're making me smile. You've been using that tool. That's what it's about. It, 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 it worked and I wanted to like, well, later in the session, but if you have any more of exercise like that, I would love to learn. In fact, we're going to be doing several of them, both today and next week. Thank you. I find these tools enhance our ability to connect with the meditation. We have to connect with our body to go beyond our body. Isn't that interesting? For the past 18 months, I've been investigating acceleration of 
healing. My work has always been with people that had complex things going on in their life and their body. And I was able to give them gradual progression in relief, but not to the degree and not to the speed that I really felt drawn to. So I began studying the biology of trauma model of Dr. Amy Apigian. She's a California physician. And I'm finding it fascinating and hopeful because I see the, the nexus of biochemistry, somatic work, which we will be experiencing today, parts work, and Raja Yoga, which we are all practicing. And it's my intention that you will become aware of this modality called somatic exercise. The VU that she spoke of is an example of that. They're simple skills, but they powerfully help us regulate our own nervous system. And I want you to be willing to experiment with incorporating them in your meditation practice. So what we did before we meditated at the beginning was notice our breath. Did it change for anyone? And if you can describe what you noticed in that change, it might be helpful for all of us. Rick, what did you notice? I mean, I, I think my mind and body is already connected to these sessions and it automatically starts mm -hmm. to slowing down. Um, it's just because there's the music and the intention and that uh, I've already registered for the classes. So it seems only natural that the changes would occur um, because there's an expectation um, of signing up and knowing that it's going to occur at this time. So that's what I've noticed in all the sessions that I've participated in. Thank you. As we become more aware of our body, different sensations, such as our breathing, it gives us insights into the state of our nervous system. We can be talking more about that. Because life can present challenges. We've noticed that. That's what brought me into my spiritual search. So thank you for those challenges. And let's remember, well, for me, something that is very powerful in the spiritual knowledge of the Brahma Kumaris. There are three things that are eternally true. You know what I mean. I am a living soul. I have a soul and bringing life to this body eternally. And I am beloved of God, supreme soul. I trust a higher power who is eternal. And every scene in this life is beneficial. Trust in that order, even when the appearances may be chaotic. Hmm. I wonder, as you hear those statements, did you get any input from your body? Anybody catch their breath? Or tense a muscle here and there? Or relax? Or something I'm not even thinking of? Sometimes we have an inner argument that will come up with some of these so elevated truths. Oh, but, but that's not my experience. Why isn't it? Sometimes doubts will come. Am I on the right path? I've noticed that my mind argues, it persists in wanting to be the source of my safety, wanting to overthink, wanting to pre-plan rather than trusting this flow of life, trusting what God is telling us. 
this is the edge of my learning right now. It's as though it's logical to my mind, but my body is not convinced. And my health is what reveals that to me. My body actually for a part of my whole life has used extreme names to help me feel safe, secure, to protect me from apparent danger. Tension has built into certain bracing patterns. Hmm. There was a time when I fainted in the dentist's office. I was a little girl having a tooth pulled that had come in at a wonky angle. And he was coming toward me to put a shot in my mouth and I just passed right out. Well, that saved me from feeling fear, didn't it? However, that was a pattern that showed up in other situations where I might be anticipating or actually feeling pain. And I worked on it before I had this knowledge and this meditation by giving blood and finding what I could do with my mind that would help me stay stable. I found it helped to move my feet. I rarely passed out after the first time or two. <laughs> it helped my body to have food in it. So the mind and the body have many influences. And I suppose I was just getting used to the fact that this is a small sensation and it ends. When I entered Raja Yoga meditation, at that moment before the nurse would start the IV, I would take myself into my largest awareness of who I was. And you know, the little things that are going on around me in the drama, including this prick into my skin. No big deal. And it was amazing how stabilizing that was. Recently, I woke up in the middle of the night and my finger was hurting. And I rubbed it and it was getting really sharp. And I said, wow, it's like I touched some acid or something. And then it was getting even stronger. And I said, oh, now you see, I live in the tropics. We have centipedes here. And I turned on the light. I didn't see one in the bed. I looked at my finger. I did see the two little fang marks. So I was trying to remember, oh yeah, what's the first aid for centipede bite? I haven't been bitten in over 10 years. And I headed to my computer to look up my first aid file. And I started to get a funny sensation. It's like a buzzing in my ears. And the room was starting to go dark. And I said, oh, no, I know what this is. Go lay down. I was about to faint. Yes, it was pain. But as I lay there, I didn't pass out. I got my head down at the same level as my heart. And I began to do the VU exercise. And after I let one breath out doing that, it was still pretty intense. I did another one. Sometimes it takes more than one. And after the second one, the pain in my thumb had decreased 50%. So I headed back and I looked it up and I grabbed that turmeric and mixed it into some coconut oil and put it on my thumb and put a glove on it and lay back down again. And I still was feeling stable. Spaja yoga is a powerful way to change our habits in our thinking. And the somatic exercises like the VU have another powerful impact on our physiology. I have also noticed, though I have a lot of signs in my world that say positive uplifting things, I really can't use my mind to create a feeling of safety. My mind and my body have to get on the same page. It's a, well, it's a bit of a journey for me because my coping style had been to separate my mind and my body. You know, for instance, let's just pass out and not feel what's going on in the body. But that's not a long-term solution. We really do have to safely feel what's going on in us 
in order to let it move through, in order to heal. And when I see situations happening and I'm letting my mind be influenced by them, it's an opportunity for me to remember, no, come back and remember who you are and whose you are. Be an influence on this situation with your vibrations. So we get to practice. The fact that we're not there yet is just our individual journey. Maybe some of you are. Thank you for joining us, stabilizing our conversation today. Don't you love that sweet state of being in the present moment that you feel when you sit down for meditation? I'm going to let the world go away for a few minutes here. And I'm going to feel that deep peace and stability. But the truth is, sometimes I can't get myself to sit down. One of my coping strategies was to multitask, be too busy to feel things, and to think I could create respect by doing Unfortunately, I'm also developing symptoms of degenerative diseases and autoimmune conditions. And I know these are not mysteries. They do come out of the way I've been working with my nervous system for my whole life. And though I'm changing things, I'm glad I'm amping it up now. I want to be a good trustee of my body to support our Brahmin family, to serve my professional clients. So I'm now learning through Dr. Amy Apigian's courses how both small and large traumas that have happened in our life become stored in our nervous system. And they set up roadblocks to healing. And then we end up with a medical system that says, we don't know the cause of this and we don't know how to help you get over it, take these pills. It doesn't feel satisfactory to me. I want to achieve that natural, original, calm aliveness. I know it's possible. And when I have calm aliveness, my connection to God is solid. And when I'm wafting around, overdoing, thinking too hard to try to figure something out, I'm forgetting who I am. And I'm forgetting that I belong to that one. And things don't go as well. But when I simply remember, like there were moments when I prepared this workshop that I would say, oh, it's time for my meditation pause. I'll just finish this thought new. It actually is more important that you remember who you are. And after five minutes of sitting down, when I return to my work, you know the creativity is much better. It's so practical. So I'm going to invite you to experience another somatic exercise. This time, I want you to check the sounds that are around you in the room. They've been there, but they've been in the background. Now, tune in. You can hear traffic on the road outside. You can hear my clock ticking. I can hear music from my neighbor. All of these sounds tell me all is well. And that is a message for my physical body of safety. Good thing I checked in. I feel more stable right now, just having consciously acknowledged my hearing. Now use your sense of smell. Are there any fragrances or odors around you now that you tune into them?
I have no strong smells. Well, in a way, that's good. If I was smelling smoke, that would be a danger signal. But I'm not. All is well. My nose is telling me I'm safe right now. And that's good enough for the moment. So now use your eyes. And I want you to be very thorough. Look around your room. Even look under things that you can't see what might be there. Notice what you love about the way you've set up your room. And if you notice something you'd like to change, well, that's not earth shattering. You can do that later. When we actually see our environment, we're more present. Talk about being in the moment. And also, I didn't find any monsters under my desk, so I feel more safe and secure. So let's now turn our attention within, letting the eyes go into soft focus. Being the light that is sparkling behind my eyes. I feel lighter. I am an ever-living soul. I am separate from this body. And I move through the world with this body. I'm its trustee. It serves me well. We're a good team. I, the soul, am falling in love with the way life is. All of life. Even the challenges. I notice. I grow from them. I am up to them. I am a powerful, stable soul. I am a child of God. What a family. And all is well. Om Shanti. So in 2021, when I began my studies with trauma healing accelerated approach, I thought I was drawn to benefit family members and clients who've been through multiple significant traumas. My eyes were soon opened. I hadn't recognized the trauma present in my own life. So many simple things. Hmm. I was born in the 50s. Now, if you have any familiarity with childbirth at that time, for me, I received a head trauma because forceps were used to speed my birth. And my mother and I received general anesthesia. What a start on life. <laughs> we now know that all the little things that go on have an effect. And we often don't notice them right away but they accumulate through life. I was fortunate to have a mother who did not work outside the home. She watched me grow up. 
I watched her clean the house. I wish she'd played with me more. However, my daughter and son didn't have that experience because I was a working mom at six weeks. I went back to work part-time. And I now know the importance of that bond that grows between a mother and a child. And it needs to keep growing well into the second year. My goodness. They don't even know they're separate from me. And suddenly they don't see me for hours at a time. Mm. That happens commonly, but it does have an impact on our nervous system. And we each find our own ways to cope with it. I quickly have realized the benefit to all of us to heal any lingering traumas that have stayed in our body. And we need to do this physiologically as well as psychologically. We now know there are changes that happen that make it hard for us to pursue benefit with counseling in our biology itself. Well, that's a serious subject. I'd like to have you experience another somatic exercise. This is going to be a physical movement using your hands. Place them in front of your shoulders. And I want you to feel the support that you're sitting on. Push your feet down into the floor. Push your back into the chair. For we're going to imagine in front of our hands is a large boulder. But we have the intention to shift it, albeit slowly. Take a nice breath in, energize. And as you exhale, create some space by moving your boulder. Even if it's just a little, very slowly. And when your arms say that's enough, rest them in your lap. Because our mind has the intention and our body does a physical movement, it has a powerful impact on our nervous system. Did anybody feel something surprising in practicing that? I feel my cheeks are flushed. <laughs> oh, my stomach is softer too. I'm going to have us repeat this exercise, but this time your intention is going to include what you want to fill that space with, that space that you're creating. I'm making space for God in my life. Enough with this busy Deborah bit. If you want to join me, Feel your feet ready to be stable on your back and get your breath. And exhale and move that boulder, creating space for God or whatever you want in your space. Perhaps it's more self-respect, more peace. Move that boulder, make room for this in your life. And then when you have enough, pause. Yes, let your body give you the hint when you've had enough. Arms might be tired. You might not want to keep breathing out. Sometimes our mind will kind of drive us to meet a certain goal, and we forget the body gets a vote. The next time you notice your attention has gone in a direction that's not uplifting, if there's no one around, Create some space for the newness that you want to influence your experience. I'd like to do this one more time as a hybrid. If you are up for it, we're going to make the vu tone at the same time we create space. Get feet ready. Back feels supported. Take your breath in. 
And pause and notice what you're feeling. What difference did that little gesture, that combined somatic exercise make? Was there anything interesting? Share if you would like. That was very easy. Did you say easy? Yes. I certainly welcome ease in my life regularly, as I'm sure you do. And this gives me a feeling of being true to myself. I'm detaching from whatever busy activity or not so uplifting thought I was having and resetting things. I'm being true to myself when I do a pause for a somatic exercise or meditation. These are powerful tools we can use often. Although, of course, starting the day with it is one of the most important times to meditate. I bet you, like I, find recharging is very useful. Let's talk about our nervous system a little bit. It runs everything. We don't stop to think. We have a cardiovascular system and we have a musculoskeletal system. But they get all their messages back and forth from the brain using our nervous system, brain being part of it. So this sets the stage to look at what is trauma and what is stress. I used to think they were pretty much synonymous. Maybe one was um, to a greater degree than the other. However, looking into it, I've learned trauma is actually not an event. It is the experience your body had going through the event or through a period of time that you would call traumatic. And it left some traces in us. Trauma might occur around an event like a miscarriage, an earthquake, a car accident, for some people, it might be their whole childhood. And for others, it can be the accumulated life experiences, and we don't really identify there's been anything specific. However, the effect on the nervous system and our body's experience through all this is the same. When I first would be meditating for long periods of time with many other Brahmins in Madhavan, there was an intensity that would build up in me that made me feel like I wanted to jump out of my skin. And I just knew that karma was being cleared, that this was important, that I needed to just be, let it happen, even though I had that common coping strategy of not wanting to feel things and wanting to disconnect between my mind and my body, it helped me to change that habit. Though we can cope and we can survive, sometimes our strategies are not sustainable. I tended to hide. It wasn't a good thing for my social life. It also wasn't good for my self-respect. But we have unconsciously found that we can minimize our sense of distress by not feeling it. We don't want to know what's going on in our body. 
and just attempt to live through our mind. <laughs> this is a shade of our emergency state of the nervous system that we know as the freeze. And it, it ex exhorts a high price. So let's learn a little more about it. Research has shown that people that come out of the military service with PTSD already had trauma patterns in their nervous system and their body going into that experience. How does that happen? Our stability within, physiologically, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically, impacts, let me use a different word because I want to say it sets the stage for an impact that comes to our experience. Whether I can move through it and let it go or whether it touches a chord in me and gets stuck in me and amplifies, for instance, trauma that was already there. The biochemistry in our body during a stressful activation. Um, I'm outdoors and an important paper is just flown out of my hands and I'm running after it to get it. That's my sympathetic nervous system that bumps up and gives me the breath and the strength in my muscles and I am able to succeed. And then after I've pushed it back into the folder and collected myself for a moment, it calms down again. My breathing changes. Probably the temperature of my skin changes. Certainly my muscles lose the tension pattern. We call that the fight or flight response. Sometimes you have to do something physical. Sometimes you have to protect yourself by leaving the scene or taking an action that will be important. If the car is rolling, you jam on the brake. That's a kind of immediate response that you could put in the fighting category. Amazing how quickly we can do it. And that's because our nervous system is set up that way for these things in our autonomic part of the nervous system that protect us. And the half of that autonomic nervous system that is involved when it's a fight or flight situation is the sympathetic nervous system. And it overcomes these inputs rather quickly. It's meant to work that way. But what do you suppose happens if they keep coming? Goodness, a person in an earthquake often has aftershocks to deal with. Maybe the first one, they kept breathing and they stayed stable and they helped people around them. But with a few more, it can get rattling. If a baby is crying themselves to sleep, that's stress. Oh my gosh, I'm cold or I'm, where is everybody? I'm scared. And it keeps going on. So the stress is there. And then eventually, they'll go into overwhelm. Another expression of our autonomic nervous system. The freeze. There's a portion of the parasympathetic nervous system that will jump in in an emergency. Because if that baby cries too long, it could perish. We don't have the energy to sustain that intense activated state. So the body puts us into overwhelmed, silent, not wanting to move. The freeze. You've probably heard of the theories around our vagus nerve and the part it plays in this. It's so amazing the way we're made. The dorsal part of that nerve carries those emergency shut down this system messages, the freeze. And the ventral part, the part toward our belly, that is our natural default state. That's our calm and alive feeling. What you feel perhaps after meditating. That state is required for 
creativity, for healing. It's meant to be the predominant one. And we can tone it up. That VU, somatic exercise that we did, think about the voice box. It's vibrating right beside where these two parts of that nerve pass down and head toward all of our organs in our chest and in our pelvis. We're actually creating support for that calming nervous system by making a voo sound. Now, I've had a friend who also checked it because she thought OM was a pretty cool sound. And it did give her more of that calmness, but not as much as the voo. Singing helps us also. But don't underrate that simple little voo sound. Stick that tool in your pocket. Test it out in the world. The good news is, if we've had experiences in our life where there was too much too fast, ooh, waking up with a centipede biting me, for instance, or too little for too long, that, that baby crying themselves to sleep, we can release the trauma patterns. We know more and more about how to do that. There are feelings and emotions that come with trauma that hasn't been released. Often they're in the category of shame. You might have had an occasional thought about, I'm not good enough. That's a hint. There's some trauma that's gotten lodged in us. When it's paradise on earth, no one is feeling any shame nor a trauma. Good to remember that. Take a breath with that. Point. We benefit, our healing benefits from bringing energy into the system. Perhaps we haven't felt like we had the energy because some of the biological fallout from holding trauma patterns, the little energy factories in each of our cells don't function as well. We literally don't have as much biological energy. So it may be that we need to get some back. For instance, my tendency to multitask and push myself. I've discovered a great benefit from a 28-minute power pause. Try it. Horizontal. Darken your eyes. Maybe you have a mask or a dark colored t-shirt. Close the drapes and make sure you're comfortable. Pillows or, you know, a throw over your feet so they feel warm. Just take that 28 minute pause. Research has shown 27, 28 minutes is the sweet spot. Sometimes a long afternoon nap won't refresh and it'll throw off the night sleep. But try this Pause, 27, 28 minutes, lying down. You don't have to fall asleep, but you're supine. Your body is getting a message. It does make a difference. In our meditation, and our spiritual study, we now have a source of energy from God that's unlimited. That is helping us heal. I'm working on my self-respect. I need to freely receive it. I know the love is always available. But without me being in a position, apart from that shame bit, of receiving it, I don't take the benefit. So there's big changes that I'm noticing now that I'm working the physical somatic exercise along with meditation. I dare feel my body again. And it's helpful. I notice when I need to pay attention to something. And it's not frightening. At some point in my life when I made the decision, oh, it's safer not to feel it. Maybe it was. But I'm older. I have more resources now. So I'm glad I revisited that decision. 
think of how a healthy baby is usually so body connected. <laughs> it feels everything. And they express themselves. After eating, they often feel discomfort in their gut and they'll wiggle and make faces and even cry. And then after a burp, oh, immediately contented again. We do well to discover and remove our blocks to feeling. So as we practice some of these somatic exercises, if you have some surprising feeling that arises, I once felt suddenly really sad. I was surprised. I didn't expect that to happen from simply this little somatic exercise I was doing. And it passed in 15 seconds. Like, hmm. Well, that was interesting. But I now understand something was releasing. And thank goodness we don't have to smell the garbage, take it out. Let's give ourselves these opportunities to be all that we truly are. Our original nature. Otherwise, the coping strategies, we know some of them that have a big price, like addiction, overeating. They create further health problems. And we can turn that ship around, even though it's very gradual, and that's a good thing. When we're healing our trauma, we need to go at it with great respect, slowly and consistently, not pushing. So if you happen to be doing a somatic exercise with me and you're feeling a huge pain getting worse or you're having a feeling that just isn't calming down, that's enough for today. Turn off this program. It's going to be recorded. And bring yourself back into your surroundings. Use your eyes. Look at your space because it tells you, I am safe. All is well now. Notice what you're smelling. Notice what you're hearing. Using our senses is first aid if we're feeling something that's threatening to become overwhelming. What we really need is to rewire our brain in order to heal all of us. And both somatic exercise and meditation help regulate our nervous system. And I have this theory that if I check in with my state, my nervous system, if it's in that calm and alive feeling, I am more likely to be in soul consciousness, remembering who I really am. And if my stomach is tense, or muscles are, or my mind is just racing, or I can't think at all, I bet I'm in body consciousness, I'm not in touch with who I really am. No wonder it doesn't feel good. So it's valuable to start to track nervous system. For instance, checking the depth of your breathing. When we're experiencing overwhelm, the breathing is very shallow. When we're in that calm and alive state, we take breath deeper into our body, into our lungs, and our belly protrudes to make space for that. Learn to track your nervous system. Find what your favorite way is. Not only do we want to feed our body new experiences, the ones that bring up the calm and alive sensations like meditation, like somatic exercise, but we also need to do it consistently over time. And we have to ask the mind to take a back seat. It can't say, well, I want to be done by the end of March. We're not in charge of the degree of healing, the pace that will be safe. We need to let it unfold. This is a great time to trust the drama. 
It requires safety. And the exercises that we're doing today are all in that category that feed us a felt sense of being safe in this moment. And it needs energy, as we talked about. And there are ways we can work with people who help us grow that in many directions. Some of them are supplements. It may make a world of difference for your counseling to be more successful, to get more energy into your body. And it needs time. So I'd like to give you a brief look at the history of somatic exercises. They're a cutting edge mental health tool. They're the life work of psychologist Richard Schwartz. It's a way to actively engage our body in upgrading its wiring. We did a creating space movement. We did orienting to our environment that we're in. We did the vu sound. We did noticing our breathing, just noticing it, not telling it to change. Appreciating our body and noticing how it's functioning. These somatic exercises enhance our ability to regulate our body's nervous system because they meet the body's felt sense of a a need for safety and support. If we didn't have those at some points in our life, we're filling up the reservoir and it's a safe way to do it. And we want to do it regularly. We meditate regularly. Honor the body with this regular practice. What I did to get it into my routine was to do a vu each time I sat down to meditate. You may have your own clever ideas. Changing our thinking doesn't work very fast to change our nervous system. I'm not sure it works at all. But I do notice when we get physically involved, things change immediately. We're so lucky to have these tools right when we need them. We've got our wonderful mind integrating with our physicality, bringing stability into our nervous system. And what an influence that lets us be on all those around us. Let's spread calm aliveness. Of course, this is enhancing our foundation of Raja Yoga meditation, this contemplative form, open-eyed meditation, which helps us develop the ability to focus on powerful, eternal truths while living in the body. We learn to feel the input from our senses to become their master with this knowledge. Rings true. It's a purification process. We're encouraged to be honest with ourselves, to let the weaknesses come to our attention to donate them to God, not to ignore them and stuff them down. We want to check them and change them. Next week, we're going to be talking more about the similarities I've discovered between the benefits of Raja Yoga meditation and somatic exercise. Just recently, I was sharing some of this knowledge with new students. And I noticed they were becoming overwhelmed. We were talking about the wondrous thing, God's description of us. Such high points of self-respect. And I could only imagine that it was triggering something in them. So the next week, I developed a strategy, and I gave them a little outline with blanks to fill in. Because when we read something, it will help us stabilize 
and stay in our calm aliveness and not move into that state of overwhelm. And the week after that, I tried having them walk at a certain point during the class, taking into each footfall a point of truth that they were enjoying that day, a physical activity. And we also did some somatic exercises, though I didn't explain to them what this was and why. We just involved our body. And I never saw them. The way it was expressing in both of these individuals was they were falling asleep right in front of my face. It's not fatigue. One of them actually expressed afterwards when we were discussing things. He said, I was having a hard time keeping myself alert. And I really felt like I wanted to go into that void. It reminded me of where I was 10 years ago when I was addicted to opiates. That's another way that we shut down feelings, isn't it? So even in teaching this knowledge, we can be aware of its impact on some of our students and introduce things that will help them stay in that calm and alive background state. We know we're a spiritual being. We have value just because we exist. It takes a while to let that grow on us. So take it in in bite-sized moments if it's pushing you. And if it's nourishing you, take it into your meditation more frequently. We're building deep trust. Such a treasure. Trusting ourselves. Trusting God. Trusting life. Well, today we covered why and how to learn to regulate our nervous system and the difference between stress and trauma and the relationship each of them has with our nervous system. And we have a bit of an intellectual and experiential introduction to somatic exercise and Raja Yoga meditation. Next week, we'll focus on the synergistic effect of having a daily practice, including both Raja Yoga and somatic exercise. After all, the soul is the trustee of the body. We ought to be on the same team. And we will practice a few more somatic exercises. And if you don't want to wait a week, you will love hearing about this special opportunity. Beginning tomorrow and for 21 days in a row, you have a chance to take a safe dive into the world of somatic exercise with Dr. Amy Apiggy and herself. She is running a Zoom program. She's designed the virtual course with great wisdom and heart. I can highly recommend it. (laughs) Each day you learn a somatic exercise from her video lesson. You practice it another time on your own, and then you join a group online meeting. And they either happen Pacific time, 8 a.m. or 5.30 p.m., and you can pick which one suits your schedule. Do you want to become an expert in making your body feel safe? Here's a fast track. I have a link that perhaps with the notes help I could post in the chat if anyone is interested. So we have them raise their hands rather than you going through that exercise. And the reason I say you need to feel, oh my goodness, yes, because you need to register today. Starts tomorrow and registration closes at 9 p.m. Pacific time. I do see one hand. Am I able to enter something in the chat that will go to you, Vinod, and then you could send it to Akta? Okay. Yes. Beautiful. I'm going to give you two links, Akta. One is for learning about it and registering.
oh, I seem to be copying it to the wrong place. Let me try that again. Hmm. Perhaps you would email me, Akta, and I can send this to you. And the second link will be one that has frequently asked questions so you can know more. My address is meditate in Hawaii at gmail.com. And you may also have a question. That could be why your hand is up. If anyone else has a question, I'm open to that. Could you spell Hawaii? H A W A I I. Thank you. Is that dot com? Meditate in Hawaii dot at gmail dot com. Oh. Yes. I have it in uh, the chat for everyone. If you can. Oh, thank you so much. Yes. Hector, if your hand is still up because you have another question, I'm open to it now. Deborah, I thought the email address was meditateinkawaii at gmail.com. Fern, thank you very much. We updated that email two years ago. <laughs> so let me spell that correctly. Instead of what Vinod just put in the chat, look at what he's going to put in now. Meditate in Kauai, K A U A. I. Would you like that again, Vinod? Meditate in K-A-U-A-I at gmail.com. I'm glad you're here, Fern. <laughs> okay. So I have the correct one. Meditate in kawaii at gmail.com. Is that one I or two I's? That is one I. One I. Okay. K A U. If you look at, yeah, if you look at her um, profile oh, yes. name, it's on my screen, it's, isn't it? K A U A I. And it may not be easy to formulate a question, or perhaps you're looking forward to meditating. I'll pause for another few seconds and see. Hmm. Not noticing anyone unmuting. I will invite Vinod to play music for us. It does have an effect on our mind and our body. It reminds us, hmm, I'm going for that Calm a life feeling of meditation now. Settling myself comfortably in my chair. That's going to let my body not distract me as I go beyond it. I am an unlimited subtle being my presence brings peace Thank you. 
white. Filled with divine love. Happiness. Bring strength and love from beyond. And release it in this world, in this body. I share it with all nature. Sweet this love. Always available. I share it with all souls. Many children. My presence brings it out in others. This, this, this divine. Your living soul. I am a powerful, eternal soul. Being pure and powerful by nature. Oh, shut. 